This conference will now be recorded. Hi, uh, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, uh, Asad, uh, so uh, can you share this uh, recorded sessions with the team also? The different folder maybe in the Google Drive so that they can go through. Yes, yes, sure. I will share it today. All right. Also, the meeting link is changing every time. I mean, I just store the meeting link. Uh, so, uh, I mean, I have to check the email and come back. So it takes 10 minutes. So if you keep the same e, uh, this link, meeting link, that would be great. Okay, anyway, <clears throat> let's get started. So today we are going to uh, learn about software testing lifecycle. Uh, so far we have seen software development lifecycle which is a bigger picture. The software testing life cycle is the, the, it is also a big picture in terms of software testing. So for us, this is the life cycle we have to follow, which is a part of the bigger life cycle, which is SDLC. Now this is called STLC. Okay, so software testing, process will follow this cycle and uh, all the software testers have to follow obviously and uh, this cycle has few stages like six uh, five or six stages you can modify according to the project's needs but uh, standard procedure is initially they will start with the test initiation stage and then go to test software test planning stage, then software test design stage, then software test execution stage, then software test. Uh, the execution stage will have interlink with the, the defect stage, defect reporting, uh, defect tracing, modifying, modification of the software. So that test execution is uh, interwoven with defect life cycle. So we can say four and five are just imagine there is a circle here. And then finally, test closure. So that would be the final stage of the software testing life cycle. So let's elaborate on the same test initiation stage. So like the name mentions, initiation means it is a beginning beginning of the software testing so in this uh, who will be involved and what they will do how they will do and when they will do okay so these are the questions we need to answer so initially there are no testing team hired right so only the project manager and test manager PM and TM will be involved in test project manager who deals with the entire project. So ba basically he is involved in software development life cycle. Obviously he will be involved in software testing life cycle, which is part of it. And test manager is the head of the testing team. So he will be involved. So both will uh, set up a meeting and start discussion about what to do and when to do all this. So they will prepare fine ultimately a document called test strategy document. So the name strategy should mention what kind of document it is. So it mentions all the strategies, all the techniques, uh, all the components, what to, what to and what not to, all the things documented properly, which is also called methodology document sometimes. So you can remember that name and the components components that this strategy document contains are scope of the project test project test uh, for the testing related activities only what is the scope what are the business issues, business issues and what is the budget and what is the time 
So in general, the development will have more budget allocated than the testing because of uh, the fact that the development is more important than testing. It's not that it's uh, least important, but comparatively it's more important development. And uh, that will be allocated like 65% or 70%. Then testing will be allocated budget and time, 35% or 30%. And uh, approach will be approach will be uh, use what is the user interface testing what to do with the load testing security testing functional testing etc so these are the approaches so if you want to include the automation testing they can include it in the beginning otherwise they can always modify this later on so these are the approaches the approach in sense what to test what kind of testing will be taking place and roles and responsibilities <clears throat> like who will work on what senior test engineers will work on senior testing activities like test design automation test framework design etc and the junior test engineers will work on test case writing test uh, scenarios writing and test case execution reporting defect reporting etc Status reporting will be taken by the uh, test manager. And uh, automation, if at all, they are going to introduce in the beginning or the later on stages of the software uh, activities, what tools to be used, tools like QTP or Selenium WebDriver. So all these things they have to mention. QTP is now known as UFT. So let's use current term. Selenium. So when I say Selenium, it's Selenium web driver. So, and that's for automation testing. Load runner is for performance testing, defect reporting. Uh, they can use Jira uh, and manual testing. Also, we have to mention so manual testing tools. <clears throat> so let's not use the automation term because the tools might be for anyone. So for automation, these are the tools, but for manual testing, there are tools too. Like Excel is a tool because most of the projects use Excel spreadsheets for writing test cases. And uh, uh, RQM, Rational Quality Manager for storing the test cases, Quality Center or ALM or the test uh, uh base softwares like you can store test cases as well as you can store the test results and you can store the rq requirement uh, traceability matrix rtm uh, and you can also store defects you can also use alm for defects but jira is a tool uh, which is popular for defect tracking tracking purposes and configuration management or version control what we call Visual Source Safe, which is a Microsoft Visual Source Safe, VSS, ClearCase, Subversion is an open source tool, Git, GitHub. Okay, so these are the tools that are used for storing the code, which consists of version, versioning. So every time they come up with new versions, new releases, they will store all the versions also in this, in case something goes wrong in the current version, they can revert back to the old version so hence the version control is very important and the requirement traceability matrix of course we can use different tools including the excel spreadsheet and they will mention risks what are the risks and what are the solutions how the training takes place and all these things so you you just remember that the test strategy document will involve what are the different components that are required for the testing those will be so this basically uh, the initial document right so there is no elaboration as such and the elaboration will be in the test planning document that's why they say okay if you are test lead how do you write the test plan that's important Test strategy is just for the initiation so no need to worry about that and test planning is like i said is taken care by test lead okay he who come or she comes up with test plan document so this basically will involve what to test how to test who to test when to test scope 
test plan ID will be there. Introduction, description, test items, features to be tested, not to be tested, test approaches, test environments, development, test one, test two, test three, stage environment, training environment, production environment, all this we need to test. Entry criteria, entry criteria means to start testing. What are the prerequisites we need? All those things, Suspicions, suspension criteria is when to stop the testing temporarily, halt it. And when the environment is down, application crashes. So showstopper, when the child functional tasks not, uh, functionalities are not working because uh, parent functionality is not working, then that is called showstopper. So for example, the login is not working. Then obviously whatever functionalities uh, are uh, after the login or dependent on the login will not be tested, cannot be tested, right? So that is called showstopper. So basically the test team has to wait until that defect is fixed. So they cannot do anything because that is main functionality as far as the testing is concerned. So that uh, in that case is what to do. So those things will be mentioned. Exit criteria is when you stop the execution. So basically when all the test cases are executed successfully, you can stop it or when the time allocated for testing is done, even though you haven't finished the all execution. So in both cases, you have to stop the execution. That exit criteria will mention. And test deliverables, output documents, test design document, test cases. These are the test deliverables, test data, test data in the sense, data pool, test results. Test results and defect reports. Defect reports, all these are the test deliverables. Right. And schedules, date and time of execution, uh, modules, functionalities. These will be mentioned like when will regression start, when will smoke test start, how often the day smoke test will take place, like every day. So, and what time? what are the risks and assumptions and finally approvals so these are all the components of the test plan document so let me just show you how the test plan document looks like i think i have it in my local i have also shared it in your uh, uh, google drive the one i shared with you so you can also take a look at it but i will just go through it So everybody understood, right? What is a uh, test initial strategy document? I mean, what is a test initiation stage and what is a test plan stage? These are the first two, which do not involve the test uh, junior test engineers or senior test engineers, but it's good to know. So let me open the. Don't worry, I will share the documents whenever the need is there. So uh, there is, if I share right now, you will get confused. So just go through the ones I shared. Class, where is this? You can also open uh, if you have uh, the shared drive ready. Okay, so this is the one I prepared for your reference. And you can just go to it and uh, so initially it will have table of contents like what are the so this uh, just keep in mind that this is the automation test plan 
which is a part of the test plan so which is a bigger picture which will be in turn part of the project plan document right so so same chapters but i just include the automation related only because uh, i am the automation tester and hopefully you are going to be the automation testers too so initially it will contain introduction like i said which will consist of objectives of testing so just replace automation testing by testing that will be test plan document so since it's automation i mentioned scope of automation testing strategy and suitability and uh, what are the test scripts that are going to be involved and this will contain a special chapter for test automation methodology okay and in in time side you can go and test processes test deliverables and risks and assumptions and change management procedure and uh, acronyms and reference documents and approvals finally so what is the introduction? You just state what is this test uh, plan document is for, or if it is automation test plan, ATP, what is it for? And objectives, what do you want to achieve with this, right? Scope, what it will cover, different GUI testing and web service testing, database testing. So likewise, manual testing also will cover all this. So strategy, what is what would be your strategy? and the suitability of test scripts you will mention and potential measures for successful automation test automation methodology so these are this is the architecture overall architecture of test uh, automation or test manage uh, manual testing also so you have all the scripts ready in the library and your test scripts will call these and master test script will call all these test cases and store the results in test result shared location so that would be so that's the overall structure and you can mention what to do with each object so is just preliminary premature for you guys if we talk about automation right now we'll talk about it later but this just for showing the test automation i'm just going through this and finally you can go through this yourself and read it out So these are all specific uh, projects. So test cases, how do you write test cases? So in simple sentences, you come up with a scenario like this, whatever the scenario is, the homework I gave you, you can come up with scenarios and write test cases for So which we'll see in the lab session tomorrow. And uh, where do you store the reports and all those chapters will be here. And like I said, okay, so the pass and fail criteria, is mentioned like this so when do you categorize a defect as critical blocker high priority high severity defect medium severity low severity so we will discuss about this later and uh, so basically just to give you a heads up low severity is all test case process are passed as written but there can be minor revisions in case of low severity what to do not what low severity and in case of you uh, encounter some medium severity defects still remaining what to do and what are those medium severity so low those things and suspension as resumption criteria when do we suspend when you resume and approval approval criteria and test deliverables like i said for normally we will uh, will be involved in intern uh, the integration testing and end-to-end -end testing so remaining are for the developers unit testing and uat for the uat guys and testing tasks so you will be involved in functional testing gui testing automation selling web driver testing if any scripts scripting and uh, for the sprint for agile we have short sprints so what to do in the each sprint like elaboration construction coding testing reviewing retro retrospective and planning so what we did and what went wrong what went good all these things will be involved in the sprint and you have different environments and different environments you have to test and uh, yeah so finally acronyms reference documents acronyms so that's a test plan document just wanted to share with you guys so hence i show Okay, let's get back to test uh, 
design stage test design stage is the important stage as far as uh, system test engineers are concerned so i just mentioned this with the star okay what is a test design design in the sense that you are designing something right you are writing something from the scratch that is test case test scenario design and test case design so in test scenarios uh, you will write the test scenarios and then you will elaborate the test scenarios into step by step processes which is known as a test case and test scenarios you will come up with based on the logical flow and the coverage okay so it's like a story like uh, we have seen a login page that is a simple system test case uh, scenario so what what can you write how can you come up with the uh, different scenarios for the login page you do the bba and dcp you cover all of them like you will test with min min minus one max max minus max plus one min max and uh, you will just repeat the same test case log in with the valid test data valid credentials invalid credentials and in case of valid credentials you will pass through and in case of invalid credentials you will uh, get an error message and you validate that error message and repeat this for all the test data that would be your scenario let's say simple scenario it's not an end to end test case scenario but simple scenario and then you will have to write the test case step by step elaboration same thing first you go to application then application opens then you enter the user id password okay and if something after entering user id password sometimes the login button gets enabled before entering it was disabled so in such cases if that is a that is what is mentioned in the requirements you have to mention that too you have to in detail mention everything then click on the login button and if they are valid it will uh, take you to the next page the accounts page let's say and then you log out then you come back to login with test with the other valid and invalid credentials so that would be your test case it will consist of five steps minimum and uh, more more than five steps sometimes it can also contain 100 200 steps if, if it has database interactions web service interactions and stuff like that so you have to mention all of those okay so the system test design okay like i mentioned login should be successful with valid user id of minimum six max 30 alphanumeric characters with a password which is valid and that's a requirement and you write uh, the functional specification looks like this SRS document and it will also contain a wireframe. So you look at and read it login functionality should authorize users using user ID and password. User ID should be 4 to 16. Alpha numeric lowercase password should be 4 to 8. Every combined together in lowercase prepare the test scenarios. Now that's your task. Now you do your BVA like we did before. Black box testing techniques are used and you write what is your uh, uh, actual data four characters and you can also write an example and what it will do if you uh, provide this and click on next button or login button next page or same page with errors and you also do a equivalence class partitioning and like this and what it will do so this uh, you write you will write in the test case so let me pull up if I have a sample test case design document. Okay. So a sample test scenario will look like this. Uh, if this is a healthcare related project, uh, two persons, husband and wife and son uh, also are applying for some uh, assistance in healthcare and uh, husband and so, so much so and wife is pregnant with twins and uh, she's going to deliver by so and so read this is a past test case so everything is expired. So and they filed access and uh, SSN is so and so monthly income is so and so and after they submit their application in the case they will be eligible for so and so programs okay that is the entire test case end to end 
Now, how do you write? You start with, you open the browser and access the URL. Then your URL opens it and create an account with so and so data. Then you get a page called getting started and then you go to the next page and uh, all yeah, you enter the data like your demographic data. You enter some some of the data in next page. It goes to next page. These are all the details. That's why I'm going to do so fast. And you basically this is like you enter some data into page and what it will do it will it take you to the next page or will it pose an error in case of error what to do and so like you see there are like 40 50 steps approximately then finally you log out and there is a database interactions also you after doing uh, finally you will check if the database gets incorporated inserted with the row or not so this is like an end-to-end -end testing case, but you don't have to worry the, uh, about the end-to-end -end test case. You just write simple test cases. All right, take a simple test case and you come up with your own scenario and elaborate it in a step-by-step uh, -step manner. So there will be positive test cases and negative test cases. So like I said the other day, you have to come up with, it's important that you have happy path and negative path. So positive means happy path. So what is the happy path test case? Happy path test case, sir. What are this? That will result in positive outcome. Negative test case, sir. The test cases which will result in negative outcome. That something like login successful is a happy path. Login not successful with error message is a negative path. So you have to cover both. Every time you have to cover positive test case and negative test case it's very important so remember it and uh, in case of login simple login page the positive test case would be you will take the valid data right whatever mentioned in the requirement accordingly you will take like four alphabets entered for a user id and uh, user id and password will be for four alphabets and submitted then the next page account should display it and test data used is this so and so. So that would be your positive test case. And negative test case is verify that. Verify that is important. So you are going to verify that. So do not mention anything uh, which is confirmed in the test case, test scenario, because it's not confirmed yet, right? So you have to say verify that if user ID as four alphabets lowercase and password as three alphabets centered and submitted or logged in. Then the same page with the error message, the user ID or password entered or invalid should be displayed. Underscore should be not is displayed. OK, so that's a mistake most of the testers do because it's not you. You are saying when you test it, when you execute it, what it should display. OK, so you have to state like that is displayed is when you actually testing when you then you see and if it is displayed, you say is displayed actual result. So this is the expected result and uh, test data, whatever you use, you mention it. So likewise, there should be one happy path minimum. There should be one negative path minimum and you can have more, but minimum you have to cover one positive test case, one negative test case in each scenario. I mean, say, OK, that will map to the each requirement ID. <clears throat> OK, any questions in the test uh, design stage? So far. OK, no. OK, so system testing is that. And what is a system integration testing? System integration testing is nothing but an end to end test scenario. The one I showed you, that's a system integration test case or end to end test case that in uh, in the name itself, you can understand end to end means you are telling a story from the start to finish, which is elaborated, includes every component of the project, like is whether, it's, uh, whether it be front end or database or web service interaction or API calls, whichever it is. So total end-to-end -end story, but goes through different flows. If you have another end-to-end -end test case, that will go through different flow, but it will start from the start and finish at the finish line. So, so one of which test case is like, you start with the verify if login is successfully done 
and user is able to process access the accounts page and transaction should be successful for peer to peer sending okay so if it is for bank account application you are trying to send a peer to peer like zell uh, uh peer to peer sending transaction and then finally user is able to log out successfully okay that is the overall scenario right which covers like total uh end to end uh so you go into elaborate this one you go to the page and uh, you enter the logins this for positive test case okay negative test case uh, will be uh, if you put a login login uh, credentials invalid then that will go into end it so you do not put uh, negative there but you can put negative somewhere here in the accounts page or that will result in negative uh, result for the peer to peer sending so that will result in unsuccessful peer to peer sending okay because the main test case is for peer to peer sending and obviously you have to start from login go to accounts page then go to peer to peer sending then do the transaction then log out so the highlighted portion is this one so you can put a negative uh, uh, in, in input in the peer to peer sending that will obviously result in negative output so test case document on the header will consist of these okay so test case id what is its id tc001 or whatever or uh, tc underscore module name 01 test case name so the test scenario is a test case name uh, in one line or two lines and what are the features you are testing module what are the modules login module and accounts module and transaction module right all these modules you are going to test in this particular test scenario and test test a sweet id if at all you have like all these uh test cases will be grouped to group together and put it in a suite in case you just need to run the suite you can go ahead and run the suite in manual or automated fashion and priority of the test cases uh what is this functional test case non-functional test case obviously p0 uh, once you are going to adopt because you are going to uh, test the functionalities of the application so that would be obviously p0 functional test cases for non-functional and cosmetic are different so end-to-end -end test case will not contain non-functional that is a different story but p1 is normally used for parity p2 is the least parity cosmetic and usability nobody cares and it's very least important so zero p0 is highest parity p1 is a little bit lower and p2 is the lowest priority and what test environment you are going to run like you can run in test one and tst2 so let's say and test effort how long it will take you to run the whole test case 15 minutes 20 minutes schedule and date prerequisites so the setup must be done data matrix mapped with which requirement id for traceability purposes and what is a bb and dcp you can mention right here okay all this bb and dcp what are the different test data you are going to test with you can mention like min to max and types okay all these things you can mention and finally test result pass or fail you will just keep this in the header so once execution is done they will mention pass or fail as a result and that will obviously contain like i showed you step number test description expected result and actual result test data verdict and step number one two three four and test description is you do this you do that so that's like action you go to the page okay so then the page is displayed you enter some user id password that's the description and expected and click on the login button and then the next page is displayed and next page should be displayed expected actual result is filled when you're actually executing the test case so okay yes next page is displayed okay and test data used is so and so you can mention like user id password and that test step you can also mention verdict pass or fail each step pass or fail so final conclusion will be if all the test steps are passed then you can say the whole test case is passed when one or more of the steps fail then the whole test case is fail or even if one step is failed then obviously the whole test case is fail okay so that is the 
that is how you determine the test case result okay so example uh, if uh, you can take a different example than login page in an insurance page user selects policy types okay if user selects policy A, then age objects is focused. And age object takes 16 to 80, 16 years to 80 years. So only upon entering valid age, submit button is enabled. So you write the different scenarios. Okay. You got the picture, right? You want, I'll just put a simple diagram and show you. So policy types and age and submit button three are there right so oops. policy types is a drop down age is a text box then somewhere here submit button all right so and submit button okay so policy types you basically okay let me just diagrammatically represent that it's a drop down so that's a drop down and uh, policy types what will you do user selects policy type a okay yeah then age object is focus there will be policy type a b c right then if you select a then uh, then automatically age object is focused so that means that you the cursor blink starts okay you can write test case so if you select a then okay age object should be focused and at the time of execution age object is focused then age object takes greater than 16 to 18 so there are ample opportunities here right see to test the bb and dcp okay so the valid ones are greater than 16 and less than 80 excluding so you can remember this uh, you can see the strictly greater than symbol is mentioned not greater than or equal to so you have to take that into consideration too sometimes developer make a mistake in that code so he also accepts 16 right that should not result in the positive outcome so you have to test that too to test whether the developer has written correct code or not okay so greater than 16 less than 80 let's take a positive value tell me positive value which will result in a positive outcome like submit button is enabled what is this 16 to 80 what is the positive uh, result positive in input valid input age object takes 16 greater than 16 but less than 80 yes okay so that's a requirement and that's what i have written in the test scenario now tell me one test case for the happy path tell me for a negative path okay anyone anyone jump in and tell me just what is the positive result for positive income i mean input it should be 18 you can put 18 is pair ah, 18 is one of the it should be not should be it can be okay so if i take 18 that is valid now what do you expect what is the expected result if i select policy a obviously age is going to get highlighted and then if i enter 18 in the age field now what happens we can what hit the submit yeah you expect that submit button gets it work no submit button is enabled enabled means that that is clickable now before that it is unclickable it is basically disabled i mean okay so now suddenly it gets enabled so that's okay i'll just show you the green color so that okay it gets ena enabled that means you can click on it otherwise if you enter nothing here it won't get enabled so that's a business requirement and we are writing test cases one of which is example is this one okay the functional spec is this one based on this we are writing test cases okay prepare all test scenarios that's what your test lead will say right and write test case for a few okay now my, my first scenario is verify if always start with verify and use should be should be should be okay so these are the keywords you have to remember while writing test cases 
verify if policy A is selected from policy drop down. Okay, I selected A and oops, nothing is visible. Now. Selected from policy drop down, age object should be focused. Okay, now you actually you write the test step and while execution you see with your eyes. Okay, age object is focused on yes, pass, no fail. When age is entered as 18 years, submit button is enabled. Now whole test case is pass. Okay, now you divide this scenario into multiple steps. What are the multiple steps? Test case one will have step number one. Yeah, what is it? Tell me first, how do you elaborate this one? Like the uh, policy A, open, open the browser, open the open app. This is step number one, right? That is a X, uh, this one. Navigate the to the URL. Should be open is the expected result, right? Then you can write actual result later, okay? This is at least test case will contain three steps, three columns, step number, uh what is the action or description of the step and what is the expected result so that that's all minimum maximum you can include test data and some stuff like that after opening the application what should you do from the beginning there should be three objects policy type agent submit okay should be displayed policy type drop down Or you can say verify that here. Okay, so first verification checkpoints verify that policy top drop down age text box and submit button. Okay, so you have in the beginning what should be it policy top drop down or should be displayed. Okay, so then third one is. So you can say the same thing in expected result also because this is action both will have the same thing. So each and every type policy type. Policy type verify the policy type. Let's say one by one verify policy type. So policy type. I should have values A, B, C. Policy type key fault type C. Now this is the elaboration, so you have to mention everything explicitly. That's why. And then you check age object is uh, fillable. Okay, that means sometimes it is disabled, enabled, or fillable. Okay, so that you verify. So every time you mention verify, verify age object, that would be your description age text box is fillable enabled and fifth one is submit button verify submit okay so submit button initially should be disabled right because initially it should be disabled that will be mentioned already in the previous functional spec so you have to refer to that too so this doesn't say but it what it does say is only upon entering the right value submit button is enabled so that means previously it is disabled so that's it's not an assumption but it is mentioned in the previous spec previous requirement so you have to take into that uh, take that into consideration as well okay so now you actually jump to the actual thing now you six step is select policy a right then what should happen okay let's not use policy a then age object should be focused verify that age object should be focused okay you don't have to mention verify that because i already mentioned that should be age object should be focused now seventh step is then you go to the age so my spec says if you enter age from so and so like 16 to 18 which is a 16 to 80 which is 18 you have to mention the min also 16 and uh, 16 also okay 16 is not a part of greater than 16 so 
obviously submit button should not be enabled so that case also you have to so i am just mentioning one happy path and one sad path all right so you can have more if you want to now enter age equals 18 now what is the expected result what you have to expect that is what you do enter age 18 as soon as you do it submit button should be enabled right that is the next case next step i mean now okay now you can click on the submit button but you might as case end here submit button enabled or disabled so you can immediately check all the requirement all the other cases like what now you enter different right here that is a added advantage now you enter 90 okay now what is the expected result check the requirement again so if i enter 90 what do you have to expect submit button should be yes our criteria is 80 and then we write down the 90 this one is not accepted right okay you have to write uh, in proper fashion this is not accepted what is not accepted you have to be explicit disable disable that's it that's why the wording is very important i mean this is not accepted if you write i mean whoever is executing this <laughs> confused get confused what is not accepted you have to specifically mention what is like something is not accepted you have to mention that something specifically be specific okay now let's take min mine i takes one negative value okay so i am just repeating the same positive and negative in the same thing that is also okay you can write separately because here i am not clicking on the submit button i am in the same page i can keep changing if i click on submit button and then again come back to this logout and then that would be different as case so i am just using the uh being in the same page okay now enter boundary values now let's enter boundary values 16 also right so we have to mention because wherever you see there is a possibility of defect you test it because there is a possibility that developer has missed this condition strictly greater than so you suspect something might happen so you test it that's what you have to do as a tester h equals 16 okay now what is the expected that is the action or description right now what is the expected result expected means what do you expect if you do this submit button should be disable disable right now it is very important it may seem simple but developer misses you will catch a defect here the important point is you have to catch the defect okay now let's have one more step boundary condition boundary conditions are important that's why we have bva boundary value analysis very important so now let's take 80 also then we'll check okay now submit button should be disabled right same thing now finally we'll have 11th step enter ages i'll take uh, more like 50. I have a question here. So, button, yeah, it is actually, yeah, go ahead. So, you say it's gonna be like greater than 16 and smaller than 18. So, we can actually do we need to put from 18 to uh, 16 to 80 all of the values, or we just put uh, we just do the test scenario for a couple of them? only couple of them so that's why we have bva right so yeah. bva talks about min min minus one min plus one max max minus one max plus one so min is minimum is 16 not the 16 here keep in mind 15 right oh, sorry sorry 17 right greater than 16 mini that is a minimum valid value so that has to pass now min minus one is 16 so greater than 16 is not satisfied here so that is a fail condition so you just test one two three four five six 
you are done. You don't have to cover all the values. That is the advantage of BVA, right? So if you cover all the values, you are basically exhausting yourself, right? And wasting the time and energy and resources. So hence, you have to use a technique. That's why it is called black box testing technique. And max is what? What is the max? 80. Uh, no, uh, 79. 79. Because less than 80, strictly less than number 80 is the age is an integer. So you have to take the one year less than 80, 79. So 79, which is also pass condition. Min plus one. Minimum is uh, seven, 17, so 18. Yeah, 18, which is also pass. Max 79 pass, max minus one. 78. 78, which is also pass. And finally, max plus one equals 80. 80 which is a boundary condition see already covered so that's why i covered uh without uh, doing the bva but i covered so if you do the bva just jot down the bva and you will surely cover it so that is a good thing so that is a fail so how many pass cases how many uh, positive test cases and how many negative tests test cases will come three one test. two four test. three four uh -huh. four or three? Oh, four, right you're right Four positive, one, two fail. Two fail, yeah. So two fail in the sense, okay, only boundary values will fail. So that's it. And finally, you can say, 12th step, click on submit button if it is enabled, right? Then the next page, whatever it is, should be displayed. Okay, that is the end of the test case. So this is how you write each test case. In, in this case, you write like this. Okay, so this we will see, you will see uh, uh, in detail uh, tomorrow uh, in the lab session. So don't worry, you can practice on the Excel spreadsheet. And test execution is the next stage. Like I said, we write all the test cases like this, right? Test case one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Then after writing, after they are approved and everything, all the peer process peers will review and test manager will approve it. All the process is done. Then the test execution start occurs. So before test execution, the build has to be deployed. And that in the, in the sense that the developers should have the code ready and deploy it to the environment test or environment or dev environment then the application is ready for you to test so meanwhile you just come up with your test cases without sitting idle so once it's ready what you do is you tester or junior tester you will execute it and come up with produce the results which are like pass fail test case pass fail which will you also take manually Whenever you go to this page, you take the screenshot. You know how to take screenshot. Just press the print screen button on your keyboard. It will take a screenshot and store it and put or copy it in the into a Word document. And you write what you're doing. So you enter 18 and you take screenshot and write a caption like H equals 18 is entered for the BVA and so and so this step. So you can say all the 12 steps will have 12 screenshots and each will have yeah, step number one, this is the caption. And below, put a screenshot in the Word document, if you are following Word. And that will be your screenshots document, captions document, which is basically a test result document, which will also say, same finally, verdict. Verdict, pass or fail, so that you can see. You can convert it to PDF or doc, whichever you want to. Because screenshots, you have to maintain P doc or PDF, doc first and convert it to PDF. Or if it is just textual, you don't have to mention, you just maintain the notepad. But mostly it will be front end activities you need to have for document. If it is just APIs, you don't have to, it's just a textual results, no screenshots required. Okay. Before execution, what you do, you have to make sure something, right? So you have to meet with Bit meeting between developers and infrastructure team and test teams will occur and they will discuss how uh, is the all parts of application be will be ready or few parts will be missing in that case 
we are providing steps remember we have pro we talked about top down approach bottom up approach top down means uh, if uh, something components of the low uh, the sub modules are not ready then you'll come up with the steps if the top module is not ready they will come up with the drivers and mix of these so these things will be discussed and how do you perform testing if at all if you encounter any issues how do you get in touch with them so once you everything is ready you actually execute these steps on the application like this you actually go there and watch with your eyes that is a manual testing you have to do it manually watch with your eyes and do with your hands right you select a and enter here click on submit button you there will be another column here this is the step number and this is a description right this is the expected result and there will be one more column called actual result right so what is actual result actual result is left for the execution purpose and result uh, verdict that means pass or fail so in the actual result you come here and you open the application application should be open and you write actually application is open that will be your actual is open remember is okay so i'm just not mentioning the whole thing and verdict it is pass right and you again select a and 18 and you see submit button is focused uh, age object should be focused right once you select policy a you also do this uh, by selecting policy b and c age object is not focused so you have to write those test cases too so that way it will uh, increase the number of steps like maybe 20 or 25 so you just mentioned so you you can mention repeat the above steps for policy b and c2 okay so the only difference is age object is not for not focus so when you select b you have to come here and click on the age object so that it focus manually then you start doing the age verification 18 submit button enable uh, 100 submit button not enable all these things so that's why i say repeat that's a note so that way i don't have to repeat the same test case or have one more test case separately you just note for the tester how he is testing so age object is enabled so i'll write the ex actual result for age object should be focused so when you actually select a age object should be focused is the expect result now you encountered that yes it is focused age is focused right now that is called pass so that's a four line four columns are filled in so you do the same thing enter 59 sh should uh, let's take a negative example submit button should be disabled for 80 okay so you select 80 here submit button should be disabled and when you actually executing as a tester then you see with your eyes it is disabled for 80 80 i mean 80 right and what do you have to write you have to mention the same thing whatever you observe you document it so submit disabled so that is pass right now let's say submit is enabled for 80 okay developer has missed the point okay that there is a greater than less than symbol and he actually mistook it for less than or equal to let's say it is possible entirely so for 80 in his code he has actually enabled it so submit button 80 should be disabled is my expectation right so when i enter 80 it should be disabled because it's a boundary value and when i actually execute it on the application it is enabled submit button should be disabled but is enabled now what do you term this as it is a yeah. fail now one test step fails test step number 10 whole test case is fail then you raise a defect next step will be now raise a ticket or defect and provide a defect number here defect number one two three four five something like that it depends on okay so that 
everything is in the test case, including screenshots. You highlight the screenshot, what happens. So basically use a highlighter here in the screenshot where it shows fail. So you show that. Oh, hey, this is enabled or disabled like this red color. OK, so for EIT, it should be disabled, but it is enabled. Yeah, OK, so then you write something like here. Submit button is enabled for H equals to 80. That is a defect. Now you are clearly highlighting this, right? So that everybody knows. Okay. Now this is a screenshot for the failed step. Uh, whatever the step you fail, 10th step, you show the screenshot clearly. You send it in the email, putting everybody in the loop, like developers and they will understand oh hey, hey by looking at this okay they will quickly understand because diagram makes uh, more sense than the words okay okay if i enter 80 here you just make sure he enter 80 here so not 18 so i'll just change that to so you entered 80 here right then for that and this is what happened please take a look at this defect and fix it as soon as, soon as possible so that's it so if you send an email, they will quickly triage the defect, right? Okay, so that's about the test execution. While executing, you have to come up with the screenshots and everything, very important. Okay, I'll save this as a test execution underscore defect reporting. Okay, so then comes the uh, this this uh, test execution occurs for all the test cases we just took one test case fail case scenario let's say and if it is pass pass no in, in case of pass there is no defect right and obviously no uh, screen no email screenshot will still be there but that will be pass marked as pass then test execution stage is done and you basically uh, tested all the test cases some failed some passed and uh, then development team uh, uh, the they will take a look at it uh, and the defect tracking purposes process goes on okay we will discuss about defect tracking reporting uh, in the later stages and that is a separate topic so development team stores that is the end of the chapter so i just put dot 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 there and development team maintains soft base okay soft base in the sense where do we where do they store their code the development code which is known as soft base so generally they will store their java code or dot net code c sharp code whatever on database code whatever in the svn or git or any soft base svn stands subversion git you already know okay we are going to use git for our automation code also github and uh, they will provide a link where all this coding uh, is checked in committed okay so that everybody is aware of it and infrastructure team deploys this code by taking the link where they store this their code they deploy the code in a particular environment deploying in the sense they will make it make it usable so if it is not deployed nobody can use it i mean i can't see these screens so they will deploy the code in a particular environment and they will give us the url link then i'll be able to access it in the browser or wherever okay so the deployment is very important so infrastructure team takes care of it they will use jenkins or uh, different build tools so, so jenkins is a continuous integration tool so it's very uh, effective in or efficient in scheduling the deployments night time or daytime anytime okay our test team also maintain the test base test base in the sense where they store the test case documents test plan documents test execution documents with the screenshots okay uh, usually it is sharepoint or any network location shared location is fine so it depends on the project so that is known as test base and also defect reporting uh, they will use Jira or QC or ALM, so where all the defects will be stored with the screenshots and everything. So that will be in Jira directly. You can go to Jira and check them out. 
okay so that is about the storage okay then the we talked about the test execution right so there is not just one level of execution there are many levels of execution so let's have a look at it how many times you have to execute execute how often how frequently you have to perform the test execution that's what okay now the level zero first level is known as smoke test okay so the developer has finished the coding and first time infrastructure team for the particular release i mean to say not the very first time but every release this process goes on this cycle so first time they will they apply the code into test environment so that is called initial build okay now on the initial build whenever it is deployed you run a smoke test smoke test like i already explained smoke test is the first and foremost important testing process which basically checks the important features which should not take more than 15 minutes okay you take some features from uh, front end you take some important features from their database you take some from web services you just put together and just run the test case manually or automated fashion whichever it whichever way it is available ready okay so that is called smoke test then you encounter some issues then you in, inform the development team then they will fix it and uh, then they come up with a stable build this is basically unstable build supposedly it might be unstable because your it may be unstable or may not be but he, since you are not sure it is still, still considered as an unstable build that is why we call it initial build once you come up with the defects in in encounter in smoke tests you report to the development team they will fix it and then they will uh, hey say to the infrastructure team hey we have uh, updated our code please take this url and deploy it to environment test environment so the tester can again test it so that build is called stable build so after this again tester performs more comprehensive testing that is known as real testing okay that means you have not just one test case you have many test cases like this test case one two three four five six seven eight blah 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 okay you will run all the test cases on the particular test so that is known as real testing so first is smoke testing or okay okay here we will go in detail instead of so we will mention and i will go in detail and smoke testing is also known as sanity testing or tester acceptance testing tat or octangle testing so mostly it is known as smoke testing but just in case if uh, any projects is the terminology I mentioned and uh, what are the factors you will cover in smoke test okay first I will discuss smoke test and they will jump because I have elaboratedly pointed out here understandability controllability operability operability observability consistency simplicity maintainability and automatability too okay so these are the factors you test in smoke testing quickly okay you don't focus too much on the elaborated fashion like you don't cover all the bva and dcp in smoke test that will take long time right you don't check 18 19 80 59 all the ages like this so that will be covered in real testing regression testing okay but in smoke testing you cover simple things to cover check these things and uh, okay manual testing automation testing what are the differences in terms of smoke testing because like i said smoke testing can occur any point of time during the day or night and man in testing uh, testing may not be available because they cannot wake you up in the night middle of the night to 2 a.m or something so hence it is better to automate them so then automation uh, a significance of automation comes into picture so instead of manual they will we will automate this in the automation script using java so then we will give the infrastructure team our code to and he say after deployment you just run, run this code automation code so then that's it it will automatically run and provide pass or fail in the morning you can check after coming to office okay is it a smoke test pass failed or black okay with the screenshots and with automated manual you have to come in the morning and run it okay that is the only uh, disadvantage so otherwise both are same so then real testing like i said after the fix 
mixing of all the defects, the stable build will be provided to the testing. Then they will perform real testing, so level one testing. So in this, as the name suggests, you cover all aspects of the functionalities, like we mentioned, all the BVA and DCB will be tested. So it, you will have whole day to test. That's why it is called comprehensive testing or real testing. So you launch the application, you launch each test case, perform each step in the application, uh, each step in the test case, right? Each step of the test cases on the application, specify step verdict, right? Specif before specifying test verdict, you have to specify actual result also, right? Actual result, expected result will be there already in the test case design. So you just write actual result should be will be replaced by is or is not. That's is means positive is not is negative. Then you say pass or fail if it is matching both expected result is matching with the actual result. Then you say it's pass if it's not matching like just we saw in the previous example you say fail. OK, then you just mention and finally you mention the overall verdict of test case if at least all the test steps are passed entire test case is passed if at least one of the tests fail like we seen in the example you say whole test case is failed and why failed what failed you highlight in the screenshot and send it okay and you raise a defect you go to defect tracking tool and uh, like a jira i'll just make it as a next step because everything is mixed up and raise a defect with description entire description elaborated here not just the screenshot like this you have to mention uh, write a description like if i uh, enter a uh, policy type a and enter agit uh, the submit button is uh, enabled okay instead of disabled okay because the uh, requirement says if age is less than 80 only then submit button should be enabled. But if I take a boundary value 80, which is not less than 80, 80 is not less than 80, right? It's equal to 80, 80 equal to 80. Then also the submit button is getting enabled. OK, so please take a look at the screenshot. That is a description you provide. And you provide the screenshot and you after you raising the defect, it will Jira will give you ID, defect ID and you just map the defect id with the test case here so you just mentioned the defect id defect number so and so with the test case so that everybody knows okay hey this, this defect, defect defect is for the so and so test case okay so that is a level one testing real testing okay now Okay, I have raised these defects. Let's say these there are a couple of defects like this, not just one. And then you send it, you raise the defects and you send it to development team. They will take a look at them and try to fix them. Okay, then they will come up with the updated code. The again, that will be deployed and that is called fix build because it will contain fixes, hot fixes, right? Defect report, hot fixes. And defects basically it will uh, fix the defects, hot fixes, defect fixes. Okay. Now on this, you will run the retest again. Okay. Retest, same thing. And hopefully everything is passed. Okay. Retest results in, let's say, maybe there are some defects again. So if there are defects, again, you uh, report the development team. Again, they will fix it. Again, they will come with the fix build. OK, so this fix build is goes back and forth until you fix all the defects. So retest until all fixed. OK, and if they cannot fix, they will defer it to the next release. So that's fine. OK, so once it is done, they will come up with a modified build. OK, so the level two testing will basically consist of Retesting only for fixed defects. Defect, it's called defect is defect testing. You only concentrate on defects. And hopefully they will have fixed all the defects. If they have not, could not fix, then they will talk to the management and they will postpone it so that at least you have some defects fixed. And finally, they will come with the modified build. Okay. 
so on this modified build you have to run a different kind of testing that is known as regression testing smoke testing real testing retesting then regression testing okay why you call regression testing because you already tried to retest everything and all the defects are fixed now why you have to retest every uh, again perform another test called regression here why because developer has fixed all the defects but he might have broken the existing functionality you did not check the existing test cases again right the real testing was done but there were some defects and which developer has fixed on the fixed build you only perform the testing on the defects okay that will take take place like quickly uh, and due to these defects fixes he might have broken the existing code that is entirely possible now what you do in the regression testing you run the entire test cases suite again the like 200 test cases so this is a very elaborated test cases okay this is a very time taking process and manually takes a lot of time two or three days so hence automation team can automate this so that they can run it in the two three hours so that's the advantage time time consume time consumption is a basic factor in regression testing so hence the need of automation testing so on level three regression testing will take place so this is the definition i mentioned i defined like verification of defect functionality and surrounding area of the functionality to make sure the existing functionality is not broken due to the defect fixes so regression testing is important so the interview question you can uh, uh they, they can ask like what is a regression testing okay so you have to say that regression testing is a testing to test but due to the defect fixes the developer uh has not broken the existing functionality just to make sure that fact we will retest the whole test suite okay that is a regression testing what is the difference between re retesting and regression testing retesting is for defects only so you just retest after the developer has fixed the defects now regression testing due to these defect fixes whether the existing functionality is broken or not to check that to verify that and to make sure that you run the whole test suite again that is called regression okay you have to understand the difference between two and tell retesting is just to test the defect fixes regression testing is to check the entire functionality to make sure that defect fixes has not broken the existing code okay so just find understand the difference between these two this is a regular uh, typical interview question what is the difference between retesting and regression testing so that said the regression testing is over and you come up with uh, some passes some fails again this process goes back and forth they will fix it again the regression goes back and forth with the fixed modified build and hopefully you will have uh, passed all the regression test cases then final build final regression will take place and whatever defects they couldn't fix they will try to fix here and that is you again tested that is called post-mortem testing once that is done execution stage is said to be final okay then that will go to the next stage that is closure stage okay now meanwhile we have talked about the defect defect tracking right now in the defect also we have defect reporting which is a part of software testing life cycle right so i will show you where we are at the software testing life cycle yeah so in software testing life cycle after test initiation test planning will occur then test design that means writing test cases okay write test cases using black box testing techniques well, again black box testing techniques means bva and ecp i am just mentioning everything so that you don't forget write test cases 
using black box testing techniques. OK, let me just make it one line. I'll just use width. And then finally, you execute them. That's what we discussed. There are five levels of execution. Level zero, smoke testing, level one, real testing, uh, sorry, level one, real testing, level two, retesting, level three, regression testing, level four, postmortem testing. Hmm? After that, not after that, like I said in the beginning, there will be interlinkage, right? This goes back and forth. These two steps are interwoven. So defect reporting occurs uh, in uh, hand in hand with the test execution. So in defect reporting, we have the defect life cycle too. All right, so let's talk about it. Any questions so far you can say right now. Any questions? No questions. OK, defect reporting is done between tester and developer and defect reporting tools are there are various Jira, Quality Center, Bugzilla and defects will have titles, descriptions, screenshot, test data, like I said, and in elaborated manner, we'll discuss defect reporting and tracking will have all these components like defect ID. What is a defect ID? Let's say according to your uh, if your uh, module you can say module underscore d e per defect okay something like this and defect description you will mention just like this for example after entering after entering what is the before defect we can you can anybody say it in english what is the defect description? If the actual result and expected result is not similar, then you find the defect. Okay, yeah, yeah, that is a general statement. What is a specific statement? What is this defect? You are raising a defect. That is a defect ID. Be specific. So, in this case, defect description. What is? How do you define this defect? What is this actual defect? Okay, let me pick one of you. Okay, because what is this defect? I just explained two times. What is this defect? How do you write the defect description? So for this one, you can type right um, on the defect description. You can type. Uh, if the age is 80 or if the age is above 80, a submit button is and is still enabled. Correct. That's all. After entering age, age equals 80, submit button is enabled. That's it. That's all you. That's all you have to say. So why didn't you say that? And build number, okay, so the build you are actually executing this defect, the development team have the build. So build underscore a one to something like that. And the functionality, functionality is, is a insurance page with policy type and age. Test case ID if your test case TC number one two three four reproducible yes and no so if you encounter scan the de developer reproduce this I mean can he produce this done his environment on his machine so yes and no if it is not you have to say no and what is the severity so if I look at it this we will talk about severity and priority more but just in the common sense this is like a severity medium okay so because 
the highlighting is not going to affect the functionality so I, and it is still important so you can say severity medium and priority is high because uh, without the age is important for the policies right insurance policy you can say it is high priority but medium severity so this yes, is Sangam, i have a question yeah so you write the defect description after entering the asad submit param is enabled that should be disabled right you are writing the defect ha 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 you're mistaken now let me go back to the requirement okay read the requirement requirement is your greater than 16 and less than 80. i think that's a defect too because it, it shouldn't be enabled on 80. yeah so read the requirement it says less than 80 submit button is enabled right oh so sorry yeah less than 80 yeah right but we entered yeah the <clears throat> i think you have uh mistaken it for something else okay that's okay but mm -hmm. always to not to get confused you read the requirement check against the requirement that is out you don't have any other reference the only reference should be your requirement that's it so okay. yeah so 80 is a boundary condition it is a fail that's why we covered we jotted down the bv also and 80 i found the defect right that is important you catch you caught the defect and you are reporting it and in the reporting you are specifically mentioning the defect reporting and tracking document okay in the defect in these are all headers components means in the defect uh, document you are putting in the jira it will have all these components in the jira you have to select all this right the drop downs or whatever you enter the defect id de description you write it and you also attach screenshot screenshot attach okay all these things you will do in the defect track reporting and tracking tool like jira you will have all these fields right uh, okay let me show you quickly and then you write description that's what i'm doing so all my description is after entering age 80 submit button is enabled and that is a defect right to the point that is a defect in one line i can describe the defect i mean you can write more sentences too and you attach the document okay so this is how it looks let me open jira defect reporting screen so in project you can actually look at jira God. Okay, let's go to images directly. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, so this one looks like exact. okay so these are the fields i want to show you. yeah so you can see here right can everyone see it's small screenshot but that's okay summary of the defect priority of the defect due date components right and below will be yeah who is reporting who is your assigning developer automatic environment test one test two and if i scroll down there will be more fields like defect description right so this is one of the screenshots and you can put the screenshot so just wanted to show you and in the actual environment you can actually use that tool so you'll be getting hands-on and okay so bug defect life cycle uh, initially when you open the defect it will have the stage new new is the st first and foremost stage for the defect and once the new uh, once you open the defect it will be reviewed by your test test lead and he will actually open the defect right so once he opens the defect 
and see its appropriateness and if it is valid then he will assign the defect to a developer that means then the defect will get the stage of assign okay now developer will go through the defect and finally he will decide whether he can replicate or not if he cannot he will just say cannot replicate and if it is invalid he will say invalid and if it is valid he will fix it okay so fix the defect and then it will mark it as ready to build that means he will give the link to the infrastructure team so it is ready to build and the infrastructure team builds it that means deploys it and they will mark it as ready to test that means tested can retest it now he will retest it and final he will uh, pass or fail if it passes he will close the defect okay or ask the test lead to close it if it is not passed again he will reopen the defect okay so reopen again after reopening again it will be assigned to the same developer or different developer again this cycle continues until the defect is fixed once the defect is fixed it will finally be closed that is the last stage of the defect so that is the defect life cycle and uh, i will just show you the diagrammatical representation because this may not be more uh, comprehensive if i write it like this slash 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 so let me show it to you guys all right let me save this image for the jira store in automation class jira defect Drag. okay so now let's take a look at defect life cycle in a diagram exclamation fashion okay there are many diagrams but let's pick one which is more yeah so this looks more yeah appropriate okay so if you take a look at this like i said first stage of the defect when as and when you open the defect it will be in the new stage it will be marked as stage new so its status will be new then developer uh, will be assigned by test team lead so then it will be in the assigned stage and uh, he will take a look at the defect and if the defect is duplicate then he will mark it as, that means somebody some of your test members are already there is the same defect and you are now aware of it so then he already knows it because he will check back with his own team development team if the same defect is raised twice then he will mark it as duplicate and it will straight away be close okay so after duplicate straight away close that means there is no need to work on because they are already working on it or worked on it and uh, uh, if it is not a defect if it is an invalid defect right then you will straight away close it because there is no need to work on it it's a waste of time cannot replicate it or cannot uh, cannot resolve it so cannot resolve it in the sense he has a technical limitation or maybe he cannot resolve it right now so he will just straight away close it or defer the defect so there is one more stage you cannot see in case it's not uh, ready uh, important for now but it is important for future releases he'll postpone it so that means it will be deferred so you can have imagine actually one more uh, status deferred oh sorry deferred right here yeah oh it is already mentioned so if he thinks it's not important he can defer he cannot resolve that means due to say technical limitations uh, or stuff like that he will straight away close it there is no need to fix it and he cannot reproduce also close defect or sometimes it will go back to again uh, the developer uh, tester how to just mention few more steps how can i reproduce so if it still cannot be reproduced then there, there is no fixing so it just be closed and if it is actually a valid defect then he will fix it right after fixing the tester again reproduce all these stages will be implicit we will put it in the re ready to build stage and infra team puts into ready to test then tester picks it and uh, retests the defect okay after resolving retest the defects so again it will be 
of once a retesting is successful so it will close it if a retesting is not successful it will be reopened after reopening again it will go to the assign stage open reopen then again it fixes this goes back and forth so it's a cycle so hence it is called defect life cycle i will just save this everybody understood this is very important oh its name is perfect any questions in the defect life cycle the whatever i explained just now it's more uh, shown in the diagrammatical fashion okay so you have to come up with some questions even if you don't have just tell me just for the sake of asking question just ask okay singam there is a i have a question here so yeah. when they have a assign and there is a duplicate why they need to be reopened that one why you need to reopen the defect ah oh, okay good point so yeah it will directly be everyone, everything is like reopen so why you need reopen when there is a duplication or right. is it yeah, that's a mistake yeah don't don't mind this so i am taking a some diagram from internet so okay okay yeah, that's a good catch so you just uh, mentally erase this uh, arrow so duplicate will be closed there is no need to reopen good catch okay so any other questions you can catch the defects in the defect life cycle also <laughs> diagram yeah faster we assign the new and then assign and then which part we are starting faster cannot uh, reproduce or oh no it's a mix up there is no order here oh, right? oh mix up okay 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 that's I mean, right. yeah it's not like 1 2 3 4 5 it's like anything assign developer takes a look at it if he thinks duplicate it will come to this stage and straight away close okay. it is a not defect invalid defect he will follow this path if it is if it cannot resolve close if it cannot reproduce you will mark it as cannot reproduce and then mark it as close okay i got it it is only valid it comes to fix and then retest again retest passes then close retest does not pass tester says tester again found a defect same defect or different defect then again he will reopen again it will be reassigned reassigned so assigned is a cycle so that's why there is no word reassign again resolving defect stage occurs then fix then same thing this goes on okay. back and forth back and forth until yeah i close. got it so okay. the first stage of the defect is new last mm -hmm. stage of the defect is closed close. so you can look at many examples many diagrams are there i just took one so this is like complicated so don't go there are many so this look yeah. like simple. right now i understand no problem okay yeah. now okay. let's take a look at this this is a circular fashion assign open you can also put in progress once the developer is still fixing you can put a in progress so it's all be based on the customization in jira so in jira you can customize the statuses according to their needs so in progress if you want show so that developers uh, can put in progress while he is fixing while he is fixing not yet fix so that testers know a oh, yeah, developer is still fixing let's wait and then resolved then reopen close this this diagram doesn't look very elaborate so let's stick to the day i'll share these diagrams in the google right okay so that is the defect life cycle bug life cycle okay there are some terminology in the defects okay which is very important to know when they say error, error defect bug there are dif differences okay so they are not the same error means a mistake in coding okay so developer sees some loop is not used uh, the conditional structure if condition is wrong that is an error okay it's nothing to do with the tester it is something to do with the developer now defect is it is identified by the tester if you identify this as a something you see this is a defect okay because you identified it all right now it may be a defect may not be a defect because of the fact that the developer will take a look at it and he thinks okay this is not a defect he might actually question the requirement also oh, requirement is wrong it has to be less than or equal to 80 so that's why he put the coding 80 is a uh, pass and that's why i enabled for 80 he can say then that will go back to the require uh, uh, business analyst so oh, uh, this is my mistake so he will correct it so he can always he can also question the business requirement itself so that's why you say when you catch the this 
uh, thing it is called a defect but when developer confirms it as a correct defect then it will be called a bug so that's why we call a bug life cycle or defect life cycle both are there is a slight difference you think it is a defect but developer thinks it true then it is called a bug developer doesn't think it's a defect it's correct if that's what he says then it is not a bug so it's still is just a defect which is identified by tester okay now defect resolution types we just saw right so duplicate defect will be rejected actually there is one more stage which is not shown in the diagram but when you are he encounters a duplicate he rejects it and finally closed that's for sure final stage will be closed only but in between there is one more stage you can reject it so that okay testers now say this is rejected be closed because of the rejection so if you look at the history then they will see okay what what is the uh, how what are the different stages this defect has gone through enhancement will be rejected because this will be mostly deferred deferred is the last stage too because deferred will be going to the next release that will again start from new to close so ultimately it will be closed but for particular release it will be deferred hardware limitations it will be deferred so it will be straight away closed software limitations like you say you cannot resolve it then close need more info so we'll put it in the discuss this again you will sit with the tester and discuss it and in the game it this process goes on i mean fixed uh, and and finally closed dot 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 means there are more uh, stages inside not reproducible so again it will end up in discussion so discuss again uh, tester provides more details like okay hey these details is not ready you have to mention the policy type also policy type you might have selected b then maybe that is the reason so he will mention more details so final stage will be close to no plan to fix it so he will straight away close it he just doesn't want to fix it because he talked to management and they think it's not a very important issue they will just close it fixed accepted then he will fix it finally close deferred accepted but postponed so some of these enhancements will be deferred okay so these are the some of the resolution types which are part of defect life cycle so they will come in between okay so let's take some examples of uh, defect severity and priority example so if i take examples you will understand uh, quickly so that's why i take in terms of uh, instead of telling theoretically i'll just take examples and uh, that way you'll understand how to set the priority and severity so why we are talking about severity priority okay so if you catch this defect you have to set the high priority and severity so that developer can schedule it so severity high they will immediately jump and fix it if severity medium they will take some time or day or so if severity is low then they will take like week or so and priority priority represents it's a more important for the customer business severity is for the functionality it is severely impacting the functionality then they have to immediately fix it so let's say submit button is not enabled that's not a big deal big issue so it's not it's just the business uh, reputation is at stake then they will high priority also they will have to attend the defects quickly okay so basically defect priority example so these will have three stages high medium low okay so both both severity and priority so severity will affect the functionality affects functionality that means it's working or not nature thing okay quality and uh, priority affects business okay so based on that and uh, you keep in keep these thing, two things in the mind and set the priority and severity accordingly okay now let's talk about the when do you uh, assign high low medium severity and high low medium priority so we will 
talk come to this and set the priority severity later after discussing this then so that you will have more understanding right okay let's say i'll take the example and set its severity priority so that you will understand so let's say user interface related defects user interface okay so interface in the sense this policy is displayed after age okay this is how it should be order is just different age is displayed on top of policy okay that's a interface related defect so it's not affecting the functionality it's fine but just a display is just wrong so it's a low severity because it's not affecting it's down below or there it doesn't matter okay but it is of high priority because it's affecting the uh, reputation of if you, somebody takes a look at it, it looks very odd right awkward so priority should be high but severity is low spelling mistakes spelling mistakes okay these are all low severity user interface related everything is low severity like i said okay so spelling mistakes for example instead of policy types there is a policy type s is missing let's say okay or p o l i c i okay instead of y there is a typo so that is high priority because it is repeat uh, directly affecting the reputation of the business because somebody reads uh, the end user it won't look good they will think it's a somebody did not uh, proofread this okay so then high priority but low severity because it's not affecting the functionality just for the sake of uh, uh this word is not spelled correctly it doesn't mean it's not working correctly so all user interface related are marked as low severity now in the low severity we are discussing this spelling mistakes are referred as high priority complex meanings in labels medium priority so that means okay so complex meaning the sense okay so policy types please enter the policy types according to your uh budget and so that looks total appropriate so complex meanings in uh, if you mentioned you have simple so policy types is simple so that is fine but complex meanings is medium priority so you have to fix it based uh, from the ground up or from the requirement perspective or spec perspective or dev perspective also object alignment is low priority like i said the age is on top of policy types that is not a big deal but it is still a priority which is low in nature okay error handling defects are considered as a medium severity now let's see examples no error message okay so we talked about the login page right so login page was i think i stored it somewhere Hmm. Oh, this is not the one, right? Uh, where is the diagram? Defect reporting zero. Oh, the diagram is not there. Testing diagrams. Oh, that's fine. Okay. So there was a diagram. Remember login page. So in that login page, let's say after entering user ID password, valid or invalid. So let's say I entered invalid user ID password. At least one of those and uh, login is successful there is no error then what is this it's a high priority right because without entering user id password correctly i am through that is a very big issue so it is high priority no error oh sorry uh, okay the login is not through but there is no error message i mean error message has to read like uh, user id password must be valid or something like this in red color or so right and there is no error message medium severe if there is if i am through with the user id password being invalid then that would be high severity right so we are talking about error handling the error messages not the error not being uh there just pass it's acting as a pass senior that is a different case that would be totally high severity high priority defect if i enter wrong user id password i am still able to log in that is a high severity high priority okay we are not talking about that one we are talking about the user id password is invalid but there is no error message i am not able to log in but just simply there is no error message so i can't understand as a user what's happening so that's a high priority okay medium severity but high priority wrong error message that means okay your user id 
is very very wrong okay so that is very inappropriate it's not even mentioning about the password that is a wrong error message basically it's not developer has not followed the uh, business analysts whatever he said the requirement right he's just went with his own words so you can raise a defect with the medium priority complex meaning is low priority it's still uh, displaying some error message but it's very ununderstandable. like if you enter wrong user and password it says uh you are uh, could you please uh, enter uh, valid user id and valid password so that you are, will be able to log in otherwise you will be shut down or something like this it has very complex meaning then that is a low priority i mean some error message is displayed but it is very complex in nature i mean uh, you can come up with your own example so you just use your due diligence and mark it as a low priority so just an example for complex meaning okay so when do you categorize a defect as high severity the one i stated before also when you enter wrong user and wrong password then you are directly login logged in so that is a high priority so i will give one more example invalid you credentials credentials means both user id password or one of them are provided but able to log in that's a description then you have to mark this as high priority and obviously high severity whatever is related to input value related defects which is also input right user id password so that is marked as high priority and high severity not taking the valid data so okay another example see is you entered the correct user ID password, but it's you are not able to log in. Okay, so this is exactly opposite to this. You enter the wrong credentials, you are able to log in. You entered the correct credentials, but you are not able to log in. Then that is a high priority, high severity. Taking valid data, but exceeded in size, just the way uh, we discussed before, right? Valid data, but exceeded in size, that is considered as medium priority. So now you can think of it, what is the priority? You instead of 79 you entered 80 that means you exceeded the size of bva then you got the error then those kind of defects can be categorized as medium priority okay but high severity because it's input related so this particular defect is of type what high input related so high severity and medium priority okay defect categorization okay taking valid data without lowercase okay so we talked about this in the uh, login thing so it has to be lower but lower cases are not already even though it says at least one uh, upper case letter has to be there but lower cases are completely avoid uh, completely it's not taking then you have to terminate as lower priority but it is high severity because it's input related so you just have to remember this whatever is related to input value really uh, values thing you just term it as high severity calculations related defects okay uh, like we discussed we will see more of these in the automation but uh, in flight reservation the total price is not correct so no Oh, these are all categorized as high severity because it's directly affecting the reputation and the functionality because uh, if if uh, customer sees more final price then obviously it's pissed off right so he won't come back to that uh, uh, airlines again so that's uh, affecting the business so it's high severity too and no output there is no flight price that is directly affecting the business he's going to uh, i mean not be charged the customer is going to uh, not going to be charged so that is affecting the business of the application owner so that is a high priority and obviously high severity high severity is fixed now we are just varying the priority wrong output wrong price medium priority correct output but dollar symbol is not displayed okay so it's not a big deal so it's just a cosmetic thing low priority okay 
load conditions load conditions in the sense this is for the performance testing so you just have to remember it that's it performance testing application is not working for multiple users for 500 the load uh, performance test has run the application on and 500 concurrent users it's not working it's the totally it's blocked it's taking a lot of time or it is just hung up or it is crashed okay so those kind of issues will be high priority ones high severity obviously and working for some users but not for the excess expected users it's working for 20 up to 20 users fine later on 50 it's not working so that is a medium priority because it's working for at least some users okay no configuration related issues sort categorized as medium severity uh, for example device is not working high priority all right device is working but output is wrong medium priority correct output but alignment is not proper low priority so you can just understand this apply this uh, to the actual project so help resource documents we have seen right what are those in the uh, look and feel and help related that comes in the usability testing remember usability testing and uh, functionality testing usability testing is two things one is look and feel testing uh, cosmetic and one is a help resources so the manual is not attached to the site uh, in the contacts page there is no manual help uh, in the help page okay so those kind of things are categorized as high priority but medium severity high priority hp wrong help message okay so that those are categorized as medium priority complex help messages okay so it's no need to use a complex sentences so it's uh, mostly understood by the uh, like educated people and mostly if the site is going to be accessed by all sections of the society so then it won't cater to them so those kind of things will should be Catered as uh, categorized as low priority. Okay. And ID control defects, complex logos. Okay, just imagine there is a logo here and that logo is not displayed. Copyright, so there will be copyright at the rate R, whatever, at the rate C. Okay, so terms and conditions links will be down here, right, in the website. Those links are not displayed, so those are not a big deal. Uh, so they will categor be categorized as low priority and low severity. So the example for low priority, low severity is logos and uh, terms and conditions. High priority and high severity is uh, related to the login, in credit, invalid credentials, valid credentials. So and in between all of these come. So everybody understood this. How do you, after catching a defect, you have to think of appropriate high severity, high priority based on these guidelines. Okay. So, any questions? Yeah, I have a question. We are use the error, defect, and bug defect. Error means this coding and system defect, and defect is tester. We are at the tester. We are testing and then find some defect, right. and then inform the developer. And the developer checked that field that this one is the defect, really bug. This this is the I'm a little bit confused. What is the bug? And developer said this one is the defect. This one is the bug. Right. This line, I'm a little bit confused. Just a kind of explain. Uh, this is simple. No need to get confused. Yeah, yeah. I know this one is the simple. Just to say your word, and then that's time my concept is. Right. Yeah. So you call it a defect when you catch the defect, right? Mm -hmm. I catch mm -hmm. the defect. I call it a defect. But mm -hmm. maybe defect or may not be. As a developer, uh, as a tester, it is a defect for me. But yes. when I report it. A developer, it may not be a defect. He might think it's an invalid defect. Mm -hmm. So he confirms. So against he checks against the de business requirements and he talks to the business mm -hmm. people, mm -hmm. uh, B BAs and SAs, and mm -hmm. he thinks it's a defect, pakka defect. Then it will be called bug. Bug means pakka defect. Okay. Not a defect. Developer doesn't think it's a defect. It's not a bug. It just remains as a defect. So it's okay. invalid. And Developer look his manual and then he read it and then he understood not this one is not defect. This one is the bug. Right. That's yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that is. The bug. That's why you call it a bug life cycle. Defect okay. life cycle is okay, but bug is a more appropriate. Mm -hmm. Okay. The... Thank you. I got it. 
yeah most welcome so any questions in the defect severity and priority these are important so in the interview questions they might ask okay let's talk about interview i will uh, end the session in a few minutes next chapter will be test closure okay test closure uh, we will discuss and come back to that so test closure is after the defect is closed and all the test cases have been test executed successfully then finally project manager pm tm test manager tl test lead will conduct a meeting among themselves and analyze that and there are seem still defects then they will think okay should we go or no go okay so go or no go in the sense whether to release go with the release or not with these defects issues so they will talk about go or no go so go means go and uh, release that particular release in the production no go means do not because of the defects still are there do not go so then that that means no release go means release no go means no release right that's a casual terminology and uh, coverage analysis they will coverage all the requirement traceability matrix what is the requirement traceability matrix the mapping among test cases requirements and defects so which test case is mapped covering which requirement and is there any defect so all the many to many relationships will be shown so that is called rtm requirement traceability matrix so i'll just quickly show you how the sample one looks like Let's take a look at example. Hmm. Okay, so this looks more appropriate. Hmm. So if you see here, so this will be uh, in a diagonal fashion, right? So all the requirements are mentioned here, and all the test cases are mentioned here in the wet horizontal manner. So X horizontal has test cases requirements are in the vertical so whether they are covered or not x means covered so those are not covered or left empty so requirement coverage will be diagrammatically represented by like this or simply you can say let me save this to just to share or you can say this one yeah this is more appropriate system requirement okay and uh, important business requirement meta requirements traceability okay this is not the one requirement traceability matrix that's why i'm seeing it's not mentioning the test cases the model name your name yeah so you have to have this something like this it is like this uh i don't have it but yeah this will look like this is current traceability on the x-axis you will take test cases on the y-axis you will take requirements okay so you can search more and uh, i'll try to share the document sample requirement traceability matrix which will basically show but in definition in interview purpose you have to say it's a mapping between test cases requirements and defects okay these document do not have defects but you can add them okay so golden defects are the defects which are still left over after the final stage of the defect uh, final stage of the level right the levels we have discussed right you have to come back and forth okay in the, everybody should refer to this document testing notes because uh, it's very important and video uh, recording this session is being recorded so asad will share the videos with all of us so that you can go pause in back and forth and Come up with your uh, more questions if you have that way because one session will not make you more understandable in this okay so after the final build for level four still if there are any defects left after the post-mortem testing those will be called golden defects okay golden just like golden drops in the drinking so that golden defects will be tested in 
yellow box testing not black box or gray box or white box yellow box okay so then they will be closed so oh, this will be like final it will take a uh, couple of minutes and sign of meeting will occur at the end of it and they will discuss about deliverables like a strategy document test plan document test cases document defect reports requirement traceability matrix these are all uh, the deliverables from the test team okay all these are related to testing uh, team only and once these deliverables are delivered finally they will sign off sign off is the last stage for that particular release so this life cycle continues for the next release with the same thing in new release new requirements new plans new test cases new executions new automations new defects stuff like that so this cycle continues okay so uh, okay so that's that's the end of it so let me discuss completely so we have seen some right test scenarios means testing possibilities what are the different testing possibility you have to state in one word so that's the interrogation what are the test scenarios these are like testing possibilities okay and test cases what are the test cases they are the detailed implementation of test scenarios detailed elaborated fashion step by step manner okay so this is what you have to say In step by step manner okay scenario give me an example for test scenario okay so you can say login with valid user id and valid password should display the user's account page that's a well simple test scenario now you have to elaborate this in the test case form how do you elaborate it so you will mention steps description expected result actual result verdict test data right these are the minimum co columns and uh, step 1 launch the web page expected result should be home page should be displayed with login and password login login details okay then actual result will be filled in the at the time of the execution and verdict will be filled in at the time of execution too. and uh, second step will be enter a valid user id and valid password and click the submit button okay expected result is login should be successful and blah 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 so this way we will continue this is what you have to say how do you yeah how do you actually write the test case okay now glossary of i mentioned few glossary terms what do you uh, uh, call each and every one in the project pm means project manager so normally we talk in the abbreviations only acronyms so tm test manager okay what your test tl is doing okay so you have to understand what your test lead is doing te is test engineer ste stands for software test engineer both are synonymous test tc means technical consultant who is more like a full time employee okay so we are called contractors so if you are working on a h1 visa you most likely be in a contractor position so otherwise if you have green card or uh, uh, us citizenship you can work as a technical consultant that is up to your resume okay and uh, yeah these are the documents i am i will sh i am sharing or i have already shared i will share agile i will share one document and rtm i will share okay this is the previous go to meeting id and uh, that will be end of manual testing okay so i just wanted to discuss with you before finishing this up oh i forgot what the what did you want to discuss about this after id control cop test closure is the last stage right yeah that's it few more examples okay yeah uh, we will discuss more on this in the interview sessions also and you come up with these uh, questions if you have any after watching videos and uh, we'll talk about this tomorrow more and tomorrow you will have a lab session so instead of starting uh, okay so i will probably start uh, because the uh, if you look at the course curriculum in the manual testing itself uh, i will have to show the web services testing and database testing i will quickly show and if anybody has database setup 
then we will share that screen you can share the screen i'll show you because i don't have a database set up okay and uh, we'll talk about those and these questions tomorrow so tomorrow we will end the manual testing so that we can start uh, next week convert java core java sessions and then go to the automation with selenium web driver so okay that's a plan everybody is okay with that any questions concerns comments you can always come up with later or you can shoot email with questions okay guys so if you more no questions i will stop okay uh have a nice day keep practicing this and we will catch up tomorrow all right bye bye bye